What is happening guys, I'm Tech Source. welcome to Setup Wars episode 302, and yes, in case you haven't noticed, we have a new backdrop. In fact, let me just zoom out, oops, wrong way, zoom out just a little bit so you guys can appreciate all of the goodness. Damn, that looks, that looks pretty damn good, I'm not gonna lie. My patience finally paid off, you guys, three months in the making, and we finally have a completed YouTube studio for you guys, a really sexy background better lighting, and better audio. I finally sound treated this entire YouTube studio with professional acoustic panels from the guys over at GIK Acoustics. And if you guys are wearing headphones, you can probably tell the difference, but yeah. Super loving the new backdrop. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I can always change the lights to different colors to kind of change it up every episode. But yeah, where was I Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, welcome to Setup Wars. If you guys wanna be part of the show, make sure to watch the video link down below. I can also move around a lot and get close up to the camera, you know, I can do, I can do a lot of stuff. It's, it's awesome. I love it. I love it. I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, yeah, let's, let's just cue the intro. So you just build a brand new shiny PC and you're greeted with this nasty notification on the bottom right corner of your screen. Well, instead of going out there and paying full price for a Windows key, you guys can actually get one for less than $15. That's right, you guys can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key for less than $15 by visiting yourcdkey.com or by clicking my link below and using my code TS20 for that extra 20% off. They also sell Windows 11 and Microsoft Office keys and the same discount code applies. Now, once you get your CD key, all you have to do is go into the activation settings on Windows and put in the new key and watch the watermark disappear. So kicking off the episode, we have a very cozy and compact setup by Daniel who built this for university studies, gaming and watching movies and videos. We got an Ikea Gurton tabletop that he stained himself and he went with a single Alex unit to add some utility while making sure there was plenty of legroom. You know, building a setup is mostly about compromise, figuring out how much you can do without affecting the functionality. Daniel knew he couldn't fit two Alex units so he went with one instead. We got a single 27 inch monitor hooked up to the desk with an RK61 keyboard that's paired with a Logitech G502 mouse. There isn't any actual cable management from the peripherals, but it doesn't look messy enough to make a negative impact on the aesthetics. It looks like he's using a tablet as a secondary display, and since it's not connected to the PC, he can easily multitask while the main screen is occupied. We got a set of those popular Creative Pebble speakers for desktop audio, but when he games or wants some private time, he puts on the Cloud Alphas, which are hanging nicely from the side of the desk. No complaints when it comes to cable management. We got multiple raceways channeling the cables directly underneath the desk and into the back of the Alex unit where the PC is also plugged in and it's a gorgeous looking PC. It's packing a Ryzen 5 5600X with the Gigabyte RTX 3060. Really great choices on the gear with the perfect fan configuration by the way. I feel like no matter what specs you have, if you're building an Alien Lee case, you have to use up all the fan slots. It just looks so much better, right? Or am I wrong? I also just noticed this, but if you zoom in a little bit, you can see some stickers on the fans and little Tachi sitting down all grumpy looking. All setups, regardless if it's minimal or not, do need a little bit of decoration to stand out. You know, I like the simple Gobi glide bar you hooked up on the wall to add some accent lighting. I would also find a better place to store your remotes, but other than that, it's a very tasteful setup. Thank you, Daniel, for starting out the show. This next setup kind of pushed the boundaries of minimalism since we have two monitors, but I couldn't not feature this. I mean, look how clean this floating setup came out. If you think you saw this setup earlier on the show, you're not crazy. Gabriel was actually featured back in episode 265 with a more simpler setup. Since then, he's made some really nice upgrades like ditching the desk altogether and starting fresh with something much longer. I'll be the first to point out the weird monitor layout. All right, yes, it's not ideal having the second monitor off to the side like that. Judging by the location of the keyboard and mouse, he does sit on the left side, leaving the second monitor at an awkward angle. But I do understand why he did it. Aesthetically, it looks nicer and he's able to keep both speakers against the back. But personally, I would just move the keyboard and mouse in the middle and just sit in the middle of the desk. That way both displays are at the same distance to your eyes. I do like that he's stuck to the floating desk design. I think this looks really awesome, but just like my previous recommendation, I would find a way to put the PC on the right side or at the very least rotate it so we can see the insides. Now, with that said, I do have another set of pictures from you, but I'm kind of confused if this is what your setup looks like currently or if this was taken before you downsized because you didn't mention anything in the notes. 
Either way, I do have to say I prefer the minimal one over this. I just feel like you're doing a bit too much here with the acoustic panels and the IKEA shelf up top. One thing I do like, however, is the position of the PC. You did put it on the side, just like I said, but you also added some custom panels to cover the cables from the back. That looks pretty nice. I'm a fan of that. Everything else, not so much. But either way, it's a step in the right direction from your original setup. Thank you, Gabriel, for coming back on the show. Here's another really cool yet minimal gaming setup by Fatty from Australia. I think the IKEA mom desk was a great choice being in the corner of his bedroom and having the drawers on the left side. The setup took about a year to come to life and it's used mostly for watching content and gaming and it costs only $1,200. So we got a dual monitor setup with the 4K being the primary and a 21 inch in vertical for multitasking. Both monitors hooked up to the desk to get that nice floating look. And below that, we got a budget Kmart keyboard and mouse combo. I literally had no idea that Kmart was still in business. We don't have any speakers, it looks like. Instead, he uses the Krakens for everything, including voice chat, since it has a built-in mic and he keeps that on top of the PC. We got a budget build featuring the Ryzen 5 2600 and the RX 580 with a few collectibles for that personal touch. Speaking of personal touch, my guy is rocking those budget nanoleaf panels up top. He actually made those out of wood and stuck some RGB lighting behind it to give it that 3D look. Hey, if you got the imagination and skills, you can create what you can't afford. It does look like you have some extra space on the left of the setup to hang a TV later in the future. That way you can kick back on your bed and watch some movies. But yeah, pretty sweet minimal setup. Thank you, Fatty, for entering. As the video goes on, the more minimal we get. I mean, look at this setup. So clean, so elegant. I love the simplicity of it. There's everything on a single 24 inch monitor that is hooked up to a Linman tabletop that's sitting on a discontinued IKEA drawer with custom 3D printed desk risers. I do love the look of these together. I feel like they complement each other very nicely. For peripherals, he's using the GK61 keyboard paired with a G502 mouse with clean cable work through the desk, behind the tabletop, and into the right drawer where the PC cables are also managed. We do have the Ryzen 5 3600 in here with the Strix RTX 2080 Super powering the entire setup and providing the FPS to the 240Hz monitor. A very straightforward and clean setup indeed. Thank you, Matteo, for entering. And wrapping up the video is a minimalistic ultra-wide setup by Vince from Ohio, who's a real estate agent. So it took him about a year to build the setup so that he can enjoy gaming and streaming on his off days. We got a massive 98 inch oak countertop from Ikea that he combined with some white Alex units to stick to a lighter theme. But we do have dark gear for that contrast. A HyperX Alloy FPS keyboard paired with a Rocat Kane mouse and a black extended mouse pad. I'm digging that futuristic Ben's wallpaper that you got on the ultra ride, by the way. Maybe someone can find out where the link is to that and uh, let me know in the comment section. I think some acoustic stands would benefit your speakers and you can also contain the wires a lot better underneath the desk by using some more Velcro straps. The UPS in the carpet is also a no-no. You should treat it like any electronic. I would just go to the local hardware store and have an employee cut some MDF or even some particle board and stick it under the UPS. That way it's not constantly sucking up dust and dirt. It's also nice to see a capable PC that's able to push the required FPS for that 165Hz 3K monitor. The Ryzen 9 5900X with the EVGA RTX 3080 shouldn't have any issues pulling over 165 FPS for the games you're playing. Also, here is another Lian Lee build filling up all the fan slots with a custom 7-inch display in the back that he uses for mostly aesthetics by adding some cool video wallpapers. Other than a few tweaks I mentioned earlier, I think this is still a really nice setup. Thank you, Vince, for sharing this with us. And that will do for today's video. As always, make sure you guys comment below. I keep looking up on the damn monitor because it looks so damn good. It looks so damn good. Damn. I can't get over it. Uh, what was that? The outro, yes. Comment below. Let me know which of these setups was your favorite. If you guys are new, enjoying the new season, do let me know by tossing a like. And if you enjoy the new backdrop, maybe toss another like. Actually, if you toss another like, it's going to remove your original like. Don't do that. Just toss a like if you either enjoy the new season or you like the backdrop. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.